Hello there, bitizens, and welcome to The Killer Bits. My name is Francesca, and today we are back in our beginner budget decks. So previously on the channel, you'll find beginner decks for Ariane, the mage, you'll find them for Ozan the Thief, and for Vanescula the Vampire. This week we're going to be doing a beginner deck for Linza the Blacksmith, and unsurprisingly, as she is a blacksmith, she's all about her weapons. Um, and I find weapon decks very challenging to balance. They take a little bit of practice to get right because, you know, you have to have all the right elements coming together in terms of, you know, you need your gold so that you can equip your weapons. You need to have enough weapons that you'll draw a weapon when you need it. Um, and you also need to have ways to use those weapons to deal damage. Um, so it's not enough, like, just to have weapons. You've got to have the exact right consistencies of each kind of card. Um, so this deck uses, for the most part, basic cards, free cards. We do have uh, Varric Museum here, one sapphire. Wilderness is another sapphire. Uh, and then I believe Chaotic Longsword is an Emerald, which you have two of, as with the Wilderness, and also the Dwarven Miner. So these are all the only crafted cards. Every other card is a basic card. You get them just from having the game or from leveling up that character. So if any of them you don't can't find, it's probably because you haven't leveled up the character um, to unlock the cards, similar to Hearthstone. Um, but yeah, so this is a beginner deck. It uh, does damage in a couple ways. So the first way it does damage is fairly straightforward. You equip weapons and you either duel your opponent or battle them. Or you pulverize them, which deals damage to your rival equal to your weapon attack times two, and then removes three weapon attack. Your alternative option, however, is with Hurl Weapon. Deal damage to rival equal to your weapon durability times two. So you'll notice that in this deck, with Goblin Raider and with Ice Warrior, we have a few cards that uh, buff your... have very high durability weapons, so low damage, high durability. And also we've got some cards that buff your durability. We've got Thurgo for weapon attack and... Artisan's Workshop for durability. So we can use, you know, the Thurgo with the Pulverize. We can use the Artisan's Workshop with the whole Weapon. Um, that's kind of the gist of it, basically. So let's just jump into a game. Um, now, I think Linza is a challenging character to play because, like I say, she she's not, you know, your typical aggro decks like uh, Ozan and Ariane. She kind of has limits on her aggro or like at least requirements for her aggro for example like you can't just pulverize someone without you know a very strong weapon saying that if you can get quite a strong weapon and you pulverize someone you're going to deal a hell of a lot of damage on the flip side characters like Ariane and Ozan you often see cards like Scorpion and Troll Chucker in their decks which are very easy to put play damage like you don't have to have a weapon to do that damage you just kill a monster and it does damage um so those are the things that you kind of have to consider when making a Linza deck um, and it does take it does take a lot more tweaking, I would say, than your maybe the other two characters. All right, so what have we got here? Looks like I'm going first. Hmm. So we've got Ice Warrior and we've got a Hurl Weapon, which is just straight up damage from the get-go. So we're gonna hold on to both of those. We're also gonna hold on to here the Dwarven Miner, because Dwarven Miner reduces the cost of your equipment. So then if we can find a weapon, which is what we kind of need to do here when we mulligan, there's a chaotic longsword, uh, we can equip it, is what I was gonna say. Dwarven Miner we can then use to you know, equip this Chaotic Longsword. Um, but we're not going to do that this turn. Because I personally don't like equipping a weapon at the end of the turn, because it means your opponent knows that you have a weapon. Um, and if your opponent knows that you have a weapon, what that tends to mean, or at least that's what I find it tends to mean, is that they'll, they know you've got that weapon there, so they're going to try and get rid of it. Whereas if you don't have a weapon equipped at the end of the chapter, uh, and you plan on equipping one at the start of the next chapter, they at least have to guess when you're going to play that weapon, if they intend to do any kind of what is known as weapon grief which is cards like reducing the durability or replacing it with something else. Uh, and that's kind of the counter to Linza, really, especially these weapon decks, is when they do something which removes your weapon. Okay, so we've got the weapon equipped here, the 1-4. We're going to hurl it at him and deal 8 damage. Um, you notice that he's been gaining a lot of gold. He just played uh, Pyramid Plunder, for example, which gives me gold and him gold. Uh, he also played Ali Morrison, so don't know what he's going to do with this gold. Um, but it's worth, worth being a at least a little bit aware of. So we'll see what we draw here before we decide what we can do. But looking at these cards, you know, we can always Dwarven Miner. I was going to say we can Dwarven Miner into Chaotic Longsword into Duel. Um, and I actually think that's what we'll do. We'll Chaotic Longsword. But we won't Duel straight away. We'll buff our weapon damage, which gives us a... Let me just work out how much gold do we have? Four, five, six. Yeah, this is this is smart. Buff our weapon damage and then Duel him. So we'll have a 9-2 at this point when we hit him, which seems like a good decision. Uh, the only problem, obviously, is this duel is going to remove a durability, which we have to kind of be aware of. Uh, but I think ultimately, you know, it's it's a sacrifice. I think we'll be able to hit him with this weapon. Huh. So he's decided to just battle us here. 
Uh, without a weapon, and we don't have a weapon, so we're just taking two damage apiece. I mean, I guess he wanted to be somewhat aggressive, uh, but we'll see how this works out. Deal four damage to rival. Oh, he's just taken six damage from a troll chucker. I think this guy has just gotten bad draw at this point. Um, like, I don't know if there's anything he really could have done. Okay. Getting three weapon attacks, so now we have a nine, two, and he's got nothing. We're gonna hit him for 11 here, so... Uh, we're gonna take two damage in return, but this is kind of huge for us, you guys. Like, that's a really big play there. You can see he's already down to three health. And I mean, we were fortunate in that we got the weapons that we wanted so that we could then, you know, play the duel, because you need to equip a weapon before you duel them. You need to equip a weapon before you play Wilderness. Like, it's very kind of weapon reliant, I would say. Um, and you can see here we've got another duel tournament, so we'll just pop that one down. Uh, if, if he does anything to remove my weapon, he does something to remove my weapon. Like, what are you going to do, really? Um, then we've got some gold gain, and we're going to play White Wolf, I think. Draw two cards, take two damage. It's not ideally what we want to do. Like, take it... Well, no, it is, I'm not saying it's not ideally what we want to do. This is what we want to do. But it doesn't sound ideal, because obviously we're not going to kill this in one hit. So we're going to take five damage to draw two cards. But we also get two gold, which allows us to, you know, buy more weapons. Um, and on top of that, you get... Uh, two cards, which it means you're more likely to draw a weapon or a pulverize or that card you need like card draw is Definitely important in some decks like this one. That's us winning the game there uh, It turns out he didn't have any healing. So we just killed him um, card draw is important and uh, Taking damage for card draw isn't bad when that one also gives us gold and this like I say this deck is very kind of gold dependent so then say um, when you're discarding your starting hand uh, if you draw a white wolf, even if you don't necessarily get the cards you want for chapter one, you can then also draw them with the wolf card for chapter two. Um, but as it was, we won. So let's we'll, we'll give it one more go, see what we kind of come up against so you guys can get a bit more of a flavor for the deck. I mean, you didn't really get to see Pulverize, for example. Uh, saying that, I hope you guys did see the uh, Hurl Weapon that I was talking about and the equipping big weapons and fighting your opponent. Um, I, we managed to play both of those strategies. The fighting your opponent twice, so we did, what, 22 damage to him from fighting him, and we did, I think, 8 from a hurl. So, like, we did we did fairly decent damage. He also took 6 himself from a troll choker and 2 from the duel that he chose to play. Um, speaking of duels, we're going to talk about this a little bit while we queue. Uh, if your opponent has a big weapon, sometimes it is better off to duel them, if you have, like, a, a, a duel arena or a... Uh, wilderness. So it's better to battle them and take the hit and remove one durability from them than it is to just leave them with that big weapon and allow them to build As it up. Okay, so we've got Dragon Longsword. We've got some gold gain. So we can get the Dragon Longsword online here. Remove four cost. We'd have to kill the wolf as well. I actually don't think this is a terrible starting hand. Hell Weapon and, and Art Sands Workshop work quite nicely together. Um, but we'd have to draw, you know, that durable, that durable weapon. So maybe actually at this point we're better, we're better recycling these two. Just, yeah, I was going to say to try and get some more gold gain and that sort of thing. And actually I think what we're going to do this turn, although I did say that it's not always your, in your best interest, is to equip that weapon right at the end. We're going to take the damage here to get card draw, and then we're going to equip that weapon. Because then we have options, and I think... Honestly, like, having options is good. Alternatively, we hold on to these two till the next turn and see what we end up with. Mm. She's gonna know I have a weapon. I think, actually, maybe we just do this. This will draw us two cards, and we'll draw three cards at the end of the turn. So we should have a full hand for the turn coming up. Alright, so she's fighting a werewolf rebel. Deal, remove two health, deal four damage to rival. And we're just going for gold here, so we're gonna do... Ali Morrisane, and then we're going to go for the White Wolf. Bear in mind this deck has no healing. I think that's uh, something to be aware of. You really do have to be quite aggressive with this deck. Um, and I think we do have the options. I think once we once we get this weapon online, like I said, um, unfortunately we drew White Wolf. Another White Wolf and a uh, another Dwarven Miner. So not, not precisely what we wanted. And I think we actually probably would have been better off equipping the weapon than holding off, but... Sometimes, I don't know, I just don't like them knowing I have a weapon. I feel like this gives me at least a little bit of an edge. All right, what are we gonna get? Hmm. There's the hurl weapon. So we can, we could Ice Warrior into the hurl. But I think what we maybe do is Dwarven Miner, Dragon Longsword, plus one, plus one. Wilderness, and then we pulverize next turn. 
Alternatively, we wilderness. And then pulverize. If we wilderness, so if we wilderness, we'll deal two damage from the wilderness and seven damage from our weapon. So we'll deal nine damage. And then the pulverize will do ten damage. So we'll do nineteen damage this turn. But we lose out on the plus one plus one, which means this does two less damage and this does one less damage. So it's three damage. But we get all of the damage out this turn, which I think is probably worthwhile. And then next turn we can always um, either hit her again if we draw the cards for it, or we equip the durability weapon and hurl that at her. Right, so she's taken four damage here from a skeleton. This is this is good for us because Vanesculas, they're normally they normally feel quite safe spending their health, but you know we've got a lot of damage coming up, uh, and that's definitely something I think that uh, you want to be aware of. But she's stolen two health from there. What's coming up? What you got, babe? A troll chucker. Okay, so we're taking four from this. And we're going to take two from this battle. Remember that your opponent does hit you back. So if they're building base attack or if they have weapons, just be aware that you're going to you're gonna get hit as well. Okay, and we'll hit her for ten here, right? Oh, she's taken six! We win! There you go. So she's... This is what I was saying about Vanescula, is they play a little bit too... Um, Sometimes they're a little bit too eager to spend their health. And with Vanescula, not Vanescula, Linza, because you can do these big hits that you just saw there, uh, we've succeeded in winning another game with this deck. Um, so you can kind of see how this deck is played and the kind of the pulverizers and, and what have you there um, in terms of in terms of how you want to stack cards. And I mean, the kind of changes that you could make uh, in terms of turn order, you could equip, you know, like the Ice Warrior 1-4, get the two gold, play the Artisan's Workshop to make it a 1-7, and then play the Hurl Weapon, uh, dealing 14 damage to them, for example. Uh, alternatively, you know, you could equip your Chaotic Longsword or your Dragon Longsword, and then play Thurgo to get three weapon attack, and then Pulverize, and then you're hitting them for maybe like 16, 18 damage, though you do require the gold. And the gold in this deck, you know, you can get through Dwarven Miner, that removes cost from equipment, so these two then become much cheaper. I mean, it's not really gaining gold so much as reducing cost, but still, you've got your Ali Morrisanes, Alternatively, if you have a high durability weapon like Ice Warrior, you can use Varank Museum, gain gold equal to your weapon durability and remove it. So you equip the 1-4, the this gives you 2 gold. You then Varank Museum it, which gives you another 4 gold, and Varank Museum gives a base of 2 gold. Um, so you can kind of see how this deck works. And I mean, if you don't have, for example, your Chaotic Longsword, you don't want to craft it, you've always got the Sarah Sword, uh, the Sarah Domen Sword in the basic deck. Um, and if you start to get, you know, rarer cards, cards like the Tetsu Katana, which is a diamond card, uh, is a very nice 6 cost, 8-3 equipment, and that, that would fit very easily into this deck. Um, beyond that, it's really up to you guys how you want to play it. And I always I always recommend that you take the deck, try it out, see if it works for you, and then go out and elaborate, you know, go out and change things. Think about what cards have I got in my deck, how can I use those cards, what do I want to use those cards for, do I want more sustain, do I want more aggression, do I feel like this card doesn't really fit, or that I'm not drawing enough weapons, or I'm not drawing enough gold gain, like, you kind of have to look at the statistics of your deck. I mean, my deck has, what, 7 weapons and 18 gold gain, which allows you to kind of play these cards, but it d definitely took a bit of tweaking for me to get it right. Um, but beyond that, oops, we'll press done. Beyond that, you know, let me know what you guys want to see next week in the comments below. Do you want more beginner guides? We've also done an advanced de Vanescula, nope, advanced Linza deck last week, the Dragon Linza. So you can kind of see another kind of crazy way that you can play Linza uh, with a few more expensive cards uh, on the channel. Uh, but let me know, like I said, what you want me to do, whether you want to see maybe some Dungeoneering, which is like our arena mode, uh, or whether you want more casual stuff, whether you want, you know, beginner Raptor, whether you want advanced Ariane. I know, I mean, I've got, you know, more costly decks for all of these characters, but it's honestly up to you guys. What do you want to see? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe hit that thumbs up button, guys. Um, beyond that, you know, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the kilobits and on Twitter at the kilobits. Uh, and if you want to support us in being a channel and basically helping to support us beyond ad revenue, uh, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash the kilobits. And if you want to catch me live streaming some Chronicle, my personal Twitch channel is twitch.tv forward slash Jaggerus. Uh, and you can always add me in game if you want and find me online. Spindle wants to be my friend. Boom. See? Look at all my friends. I have no idea who most of these people are. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. And have a great day. Bye.